So we've got some really weird Threadripper benchmarks and cryptocurrency motherboards now? Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Gamer Melt. Before we get started, I'm going to be doing a live hardware talk this Sunday where I answer some of your questions. I've already discussed it on Discord and with my Twitter followers, but if you haven't had a chance to respond, just leave your question in the comments below. I'll answer some of my favorites Sunday night. I haven't figured out a time just yet, but it should be around the same time I do my videos, maybe a little bit earlier. Okay. So WCC FTX seems to have spotted Threadripper's 16-core, 32-thread CPU on SciSoft and Geekbench. Let's just say something is amiss. The Geekbench score is Intel's 10-core CPU beating Threadripper's 16-core by a large margin. That obviously makes no sense, considering there isn't nearly enough of a difference in IPC between Ryzen and Intel's X299 to make such a huge gap happen. The weird thing is that you can see they have two different benchmarks where Threadripper was spotted. The older benchmark has worse multi-threaded performance, while the newest benchmark has worse single-threaded performance. Yeah, that's weird considering they're at the same clock speed, same system, etc. Then you have the Xeon beating it out with 2.6 GHz clocks. That also makes no sense when we know that it should definitely be outdoing that with ease, especially considering its clocks. So what does all this mean? Well, it's a single Geekbench score. I can find similar scores as Threadripper with Ryzen 7 1800X, even at relatively similar clocks. The middle ground of most benchmarks puts it at 1900 to 2000 without any boost clocks, and doubling the cores should at the very least boost it up to 3500 or so. But of course, I can also find much lower scores, and much higher scores, especially when you get into overclocking around 4 GHz. Basically, we really should know what to expect from Threadripper, considering it's the same CCX modules that make up Ryzen. If anything, we may see slightly less performance than, say, double, thanks to degradation when scaling in general and adding more CCX modules, so there would be more use of the Infinity Fabric, but simply put, these should be very minute. And these benchmarks just don't at all mean Threadripper will underperform in multi-core performance to the 7900X. I mean, at least from what I've seen. Let's just say it wouldn't make any sense for AMD to even release anything beyond 8 cores if it actually scaled that badly. So I highly doubt this is any real indication of what the overall scores and performance will be. Next up, the race to keep crypto miners happy has begun. With Sapphire, Asus, Biostar, Zotac, MSI, Manly, and Colorful all now in the mining sphere with GPUs made specifically for it. And they're just about what we expected. Some don't have any video outputs and some have very little. One interesting part is the use of older RX400 series GPUs, presumably for lower power consumption. Here's the thing though. Not only have they begun making GPUs specifically geared towards miners, but manufacturers are also unveiling mining specific motherboard with tons of PCI Express slots. Sure, they're only times one, but as Tech Power Up discusses, mining doesn't really require high amounts of bandwidth, so it's not a bad idea. So I think the question many are probably wondering is whether these will be priced well enough to keep miners off of regular cards. To that, I'm really not sure. It's a tough call to make and is a little risky considering there's a chance no one wants them, leaving retailers and manufacturers stuck with a ton of stock they can't get rid of. On the other hand, if they overproduce regular cards and something causes Ethereum and some of the other stocks to fall, or it just became so oversaturated the regular GPUs aren't worth mining anymore, there could be an oversaturation in the GPU market due to tons of miners selling off their old cards. This would then cannibalize their sales for a while. Then again, a company that risked it might win in the end with customer satisfaction. It's really tough to say what can happen and when everything will be back up. Hopefully these new GPUs are good enough to warrant waiting for instead of buying up consumer GPUs. Here's to hoping. So what did you think of today's video? Are you ready for GPUs to be back in stock? And what about AMD's Threadripper benchmarks? Do you think I'm right and that it just really isn't any indication of the performance of it, or at least it would make zero sense if that was the performance? Let me know in the comments below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggest a video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.